When I was 12 years old, I contacted a teenage fashion magazine to ask them how I could become their marketing manager, which education I needed to get this big position. And when I was 11 years old, a year earlier, I contacted the head coach of these Olympic rowers in New Zealand for my school project. I mean, I was 11 and they replied. I mean, how crazy is that? And I got a principal's award for this an award out, uh, given for outstanding work for a student at the primary school. And this is me up there in my school uniform in New Zealand with a sweat wet, sweatband watch. I mean, I thought that was trendy. The fashion police didn't call though, they should have. What Daniel already explained to you is that uh, networking is my hobby, but as you were saying before, it's not yours. And some people think I'm crazy, but that's actually why I'm standing here today is because I want to share my stories and strategies about how it became my hobby. So I was saying before is that when I was 11 or 12, I was already networking. Um, but when I was at university, I realized that my friends thought about it in a totally different way. So we were all looking for internships and I said to them like, why don't you just call the company and ask if they have th that they have a position for you? And they said, no. I'm not going to call them because I'm super scared that I'll be on the phone and oh, I don't know what to say or that they'll ask me a question and I'll totally blank. And this is actually the first time I realized that uh, networking had sort of become my superpower. And that's why I'm standing here today because I want to share my stories and strategies so that it will become your hobby as well and that it will no longer feel like a chore. This is me uh, at a networking event. You see that I'm in my element, like a big smile on my face. <laughs> I actually uh, put this picture on Facebook as a joke. I said, hey guys, networking can be fun. Look at me in this picture. And then people send me a message like, oh, can you teach me? Like, give me your workshop about it because I hate it. When I was uh, preparing this talk, I thought, what helped me in my childhood to make networking my hobby? And my dad was an entrepreneur for many years and he instilled some great wisdom in me. And one of these things is a Dutch saying, ne heb je, ja kun je krijgen. And for the non-Dutch speakers among us, this means you have a no, but you can get to a yes. And this seems like a very simple phrase, right? But looking back, I realized that it's actually really important. It's all about the fear of rejection. When you realize that you already have a no, that that is your starting point, that you've embraced the no, that you've embraced rejection, you can aim for the yes. You can aim for the stars, right? But you're probably thinking, that's such an easy thing, to you, a thing for you to say. But I've been nervous for this talk for weeks. I mean, I'm also scared of the fear of rejection. This is, this is human nature for us to feel scared when we're doing something that we've never done before. I've actually never spoken to a group this big before. I mean, I've spoken to people in groups of like 10 or 20, but never for such a big audience. But I'm standing here today because my message that I want to get across is more important than my fear of rejection. And you're probably thinking, nice, this quote on the tile, but give me a little bit more practical advice. So as Daniel was saying, for me, networking is all about creating friendships. But how do you go about doing that? And, and what kind of forms does networking come in? Well, I want to explain to you that networking can come in all sorts of different forms. For example, you can be in your pajamas at home, warm, behind your computer, and send messages to people uh, on, in Facebook groups. Are there people in here that are part of the Young Creators Facebook group? Yeah, cool, as some of you. Well, I think it's a really valuable group. So if you're not part of it, and during the networking drinks, look it up. It's this nice place online where people post like cool assignments or they look for co-founders and startups. Um, but this is, a th this is also networking. Like if someone posts an assignment, you can be like, hey, I'm interested, or I know someone that's available for this kind of job. So this is one kind of networking, which is quite easy and safe. You can do it in your pajamas. And there is also a different kind of networking. 
that, makes, that gets you a little bit more out of your comfort zone. So think about it. Maybe you have like a mom or a dad who have friends that have really cool businesses or work at a really cool organization. And you can ask your mom and your dad like, hey, invite them over for dinner. And I can maybe ask them if they have an internship for me. That way, you can be at your own family house, have a dinner that you're comfortable with, but meet someone new. So that's something a little bit more out of your comfort zone. And then there's things like sending an email to a complete stranger or calling someone up on the phone, like I was showing before, someone that you've never spoken to before. And that can make a lot of people quite nervous. But it's nice to realize that you can really build it up and get better at each time. A lot of people think that networking is all about gray-haired men in suits and that you come to a networking event and you're like in the corner and you're like, oh, I don't know anybody. But for me, this is really like hair on the scope. Um, but you can start there, right? And as I was saying at the start of my talk, I've been networking since I was like 12 or 13 and now I'm nearly 25. So I've had a lot of practice. So my first lesson that I wanted to share with you is nee heb je, ja kun je krijgen, you've got to know, you can get a yes. And my second lesson is all about the power of a curious mind. That sounds exciting, right? So I want to tell you a little story. I live in Rotterdam and I moved there about a few years ago. And I really wanted to go to this concert by this French composer, maybe some of you know him, Jan Tiersen from the composer of the movie, uh, Amelie. Da -da 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 -da. Um, yeah, I'm not a singer. Um, but I contacted some friends and I said, hey, who wants to come to this concert with me? And one friend said, uh, no, I'm broke. Like, don't you, don't you realize I'm still a student? And someone else said, and we really don't have the same music taste. Um, so I thought, oh, I really want to hear my favorite song live. So I ended up going by myself. As Daniel said, I'm a little bit crazy, so I did this. And I walked into this room and the lights were bright like this, but they never, the room never actually got dark. So there's all these people standing with their friends, and then there was me. Um, and so I thought, this is, the worst way I could spend an evening. This was such a bad idea. Um, and the, th the funny thing was is this, this musician never played my favorite song because he had all these new albums that I forgot to listen to. And yeah. <laughs> but as I was, I was at this concert and there was this guy, this lanky ginger guy, um, with this, what I thought was his girlfriend. And this, this girl, she left to go grab a beer or go to the toilet and I thought, this is my moment. <laughs> there, is, there is no one else in the room that is by themselves except this guy. So <laughs> I ran over to him and I said, hey, <laughs> worked up all my courage. And I said to him, what did you think of the opening set? I personally thought it was terrible, but I was curious. And, he, and we started chatting and I said to him, uh, what do you do? And he told me that he ran his own business. And I said, I'm actually working on my um, thesis on entrepreneurship. And he said, actually, I'm on the board of this cool networking club in Rotterdam. You should really join our events. And as we were talking, his girlfriend walked up and she probably thought, why the fuck is this girl <laughs> talking to my boyfriend? I mean, this wasn't the plan. So things got awkward and I <laughs> um, went there to stand by myself again. Let's just say it was an awful evening. But the thing is, is that I ended up going to the events of this networking club and I also got invited to this special speed dating event um, where young entrepreneurs got to meet directors of big Rotterdam companies like the Port of Rotterdam, Erasmus University and Rotterdam the Hague Airport. So there was little old me just graduated and I was sitting across from the director of Rotterdam the Hague Airport and I thought this is a speed date setting right so we only had two minutes um, we only had two minutes and I thought, how, what am I going to say to impress this guy? I mean, this is a shot to maybe get a really cool freelance assignment out of it. 
and I don't know what, how I worked out the courage, but I asked this new director of the airport, he'd only been working there for a few months, I said to him, what are you running up against in, 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 your, in your new position? What are you struggling with? I'd only spoken to this guy for 30 seconds. What was I thinking? I mean, who asked someone, what are you struggling with in life? Like, that's crazy. But I did this. And he open-heartedly shared uh, with me what he was currently struggling, struggling with in this job. Um, and I said, actually, I have a marketing communications background. I'd love to chat to you further about your problem. I connected with him on LinkedIn, and today, I am his first coordinator of innovative partnerships. Woo. Woo! <laughs> so I think that's the power of the curious mind. So it made me go to that super awkward concert by myself because I really wanted to hear the music. It allowed me to go to the networking event and join this cool networking club. And in the end, it got me that awesome job. Something that I didn't reply for, right? He, he offered me this position this job had never been um, given to someone before. It was newly created. And because it was newly created, I got to choose my own job title and my own salary. Let's just say that was a good, <laughs> that, that was a good thing, buying that ticket to that concert. So I've been working at the airport for the past year. And this is me celebrating my, uh, my new position at the airport. So you're probably thinking, how do you go to an event like that and ask someone such a bold question? I mean, that takes a bit of balls, right? Um, but when I look back on my childhood, I think about what my parents taught me. And often at the dinner table, my parents would discuss with us, like, hey, why did you make that decision today? Or why did you choose that and not that? And I'm not going to lie, when I was 14, I thought that was so annoying. I rolled my eyes so many times. I mean, who has parents that like to lecture you for an hour? I do. <laughs> yeah. But what my parents did teach me is the power of questions, the power of self-reflection, really making connection with someone else. So that was my second lesson, the power of a curious mind. And my third lesson is being visible. So my dad, the entrepreneur, still regularly likes to tell me, Anne, in your business, it's all about who you know and that they know what you do. Oh. So this is me on LinkedIn without glasses. I think I look less nerdy like that. Um, so I'm curious, who, who of you is on LinkedIn? And keep your hands up if you use it more than once a week. Oh, that's a lot of you, woo. So I want to tell you, tell you a little bit about how I use LinkedIn. So for me, it's a little bit of a magical tool. I mean, that was my gateway also to get the job at, um, at the airport. So I made a LinkedIn when I was sick at home during my studies. I was sick in bed and I thought, oh, how can, how can I still make this day useful? And I made an account. And then in my first year of working, I thought, I want to reach the 500 plus. Um, anyone else at 500 plus uh, in this room? Yeah. It's a, I think it's a bit of a nerdy goal, right? But it's, it's, it's nice to have that number up there. Um, so what my strategy was that every time I met someone new in my job, and if they were interesting, I would send them a message uh, with an invitation. Um, and I saw my number growing, growing. Um, and what I do on LinkedIn is I really tag people in my network uh, for assignments, tag them in articles. I really try to add value and I share um, what I do. I, for example, shared that I'm speaking at this event. Um, I sometimes share blog posts and I think it adds well to Tara's story that I'm making sure that I'm visible and, if, and that people who look me up online know that I can add value to their company. But of course, as many of you know, there is more social media platforms than just LinkedIn. And as Daniel already said, I'm a photographer, so Instagram is a platform that I use as well. And with Instagram, you, connect, you can connect with creatives all over the world, and that's what I do as well. 
Um, what I do is sometimes there's people who write like really cool posts and I comment a genuine message, not like cool shot when it's a video, or that I comment, oh, what a nice picture when someone's just explained that their grandmother has died, because that really does happen on Instagram. Um, but I want to share a personal story about what happened when I connected with someone on Instagram. So there's this girl, her name is Saskia, and she also lives in the Rotterdam area. And she had this really cool web shop, um, and she also um, made these nice collages. Um, so sometimes I'd comment on her pictures and be like, hey, like, I love what you're doing. What project are you working on? Um, and then after a while, I thought, this girl's really cool. Maybe I'll add her on Facebook. That is a weird thing to do when you've never spoken to someone in real life or never talked to them on the phone, but I did that. Um, and then as a photographer, I also share pictures of my wedding photography on Facebook so people know that I'm visible and know what they can hire me for. And then so a couple of weeks ago, she, she wrote a comment on one of my uh, wedding pictures. Um, and she said, Anne, if I ever get married, I would love for you to photograph my wedding. Um, and I thought, cool. There is more friends that say that. They say uh, that, they'd love to that they'd love for me to photograph their wedding. But I mean, we're in our early 20s, so hopefully that's going to be another 10 years until that happens, right? So it doesn't feel concrete. Um, it's not like I have money in my hand then. Um, but this girl, Saskia, after seven days, she actually sent me a message like, Anne, in capital letters, Anne, I'm engaged. <laughs> <laughs> Will you photograph my wedding? Um, so I'm going to photograph her wedding in September. Like, how crazy is that? That's the power of the internet, right? So never met this girl, never spoken to her in real life, but I'm going to be photographing the most beautiful day of her life. So guys, I think this is the sign that you've been waiting for to turn, your, to turn networking into a hobby. I want to conclude my speech by summing up the lessons that I've shared with you so far. So the first one was, Nee heb je, ja kun je krijgen. You've got to know, but you can aim for the yes. It's all about embracing the fear of rejection and making your goal bigger than your fear of, um, of doing it. The second one is all about the power of a curious mind and really m having meaningful conversations with other people, like the director of the airport and the guy at the concert. And the third lesson was Show that you're visible and add value to other people online. So connect with people on LinkedIn and connect with people on Instagram and on Facebook. Make friendships. And I think when you combine those three things, you've really got a recipe to kickstart your career. So this is me uh, doing a funny pose <laughs> in a photo shoot. But the thing is that I want to share with you guys is uh, we have one more great speaker after this, and then it's the drinks. So I invite you all to connect with me on LinkedIn. This is my first and last name. Um, and send me a message. Don't just invite me because I hate that. Send me a message. Tell me what you thought of this talk, and let's connect. And if you see me at the drinks and you have a question, come speak to me. Because in all honesty, I won't bite. I'll only ask you a million questions. Thank you.